future wars will be conducted based upon intelligence input gathered from enemy's territory uh, suppose there is a war with pakistan or china or even indian ocean region uh, then we have to know what exactly pakistan is doing in depth what they are doing towards their military assets which are closer to afghanistan border closer to iran border similarly in tibet in case there is a skirmish with china we would like to know what is uh, pla doing in tibet or uh, even in depth in china similarly in case there is a war uh, pakistan navy or pla navy may operate from indian ocean region to cause damage to our coastal installations both military as well as a civilian uh, so we would like to know well in advance uh, what they are up to uh, these kind of a uh, intelligence uh, gathering uh, activities were on earlier also but they were not very very organized on military scale you see earlier we had some uh, satellites uh, which isro had launched uh, we had cartograph series of satellites we had uh, reset a uh, set of uh, satellites uh, which were rather you know radar imaging satellites uh, the resolution was not very good and uh, we had gsat we had uh, uh, insat but uh, their orbiting time was very long uh, that means they will pass over an enemy target area say after 4 hours after 8 hours because they were in polar orbit so now a need was felt by indian defense community Uh, that we should have a series of satellites which should have two three special requirement one is they must pass over target areas in depth that means they must pass over uh, mainland china they must pass over uh, areas of pakistan which are contiguous to uh, afghanistan iran and similarly in indian ocean then there is a thing called persistence in observation this is a, a, a terminology used by military you see we want a continuous imaginary imagery of the enemy territory enemy enemy movements um, so uh, at any time our satellites must be passing over our required target area uh, say within uh, every 40 minutes or every 1 hour 2 minutes one satellite must pass so that we have the latest information about his uh, moves where is he moving his assets so uh, it was calculated that in all we if we have 52 defense satellites orbiting in space say in geostationary orbit or in low earth orbit that would serve the purpose what happens during any war any skirmish uh, probably army and uh, navy will be uh, satisfied with a data which is one hour old Uh, because their operations uh, enemy ship or enemy submarine or enemy armor formation Uh, moves uh, uh, say every uh, one hour but in case of air force what happens our requirement is to have minute to minute data about enemy aircraft movement enemy refuelers air area refuelers i am talking about um, his avac aircraft his airborne electronic warfare aircraft uh, is he taking off is he landing so um, air force wanted that we should have almost minute to minute information about enemy's asset locations so this concept it is a very very uh, uh, developed concept many other countries are using it this concept of high altitude platform uh, it will be uh, this uh, high altitude platform system will actually contribute uh, consist of three aircraft presently these will be uavs unarmed aerial vehicles flying at very high altitude say um, um, almost on the threshold of atmosphere so we can say they will be uh, flying at a altitude of 1 lakh feet which is almost exosphere and from there they will continue to give minute to minute uh, information about enemy's aircraft movement and other activities uh, we have to remember that uh, one advantage vis-a-vis satellite these um, haps will have see satellites will continue to orbit so they can come over the target area after Uh, every um, say 40 minute or 1 hour 20 minutes even these uh, 52 defense surveillance satellites but these haps can fly over designated target area continuously suppose we want to know what is happening in nur khan air base we can position it at an altitude of 80000 90000 1 lakh feet above nur khan and it can continue to fly over nur khan same say galwan 
if we want to know there is a tension in aksai chin and we want to know what kind of a movement is taking place on their highway uh, which uh, near uh, you know it is called g219 so uh, we can position our haps over g219 uh, which is china china's national highway connecting say khasgar up to aksai chin and uh, beyond lhasa we can get minute to minute information about our targets there uh, recently there were one or two failures on pslv uh, but pslv is a highly reliable platform if you compare the uh, uh, failure rates of say nasa or soyuz mission or even elon musk missions um pslv is highly successful platform there were hardly there are hardly one or two percent failures we have launched 51 failed we have launched more than 102 failed so we continue to have lot of faith in pslv we are not worried it is an accepted norm that out of every 100 launches one or two may not uh, achieve a successful uh, injection a satellite injection into space that happens we are not worried isro is doing a yeoman's uh, work and our uh, um, universities especially iits are doing a wonderful job what happens that we have a setup called ids integrated defense staff they are a, c- a combination of army navy air force drdo uh, and a scientific advisor to government of india uh, they keep thinking what will be done after 10 years or 20 years so accordingly we have a organization called a dsa defense space agency they are planning very very ambitious plans our plans are not only to have our satellites in space in large number but also they will be able to jam enemy communications they will be able to target enemy um, satellites they will be able to guide our entities enemy when we are suppose after 20 years there is a requirement of shooting down an hostile satellite so these uh, our satellites will be able to guide our ground based missiles which we will launch which we will launch at enemy satellite they will be able to give us targeting information as well as they will guide our uh, missile up to enemy satellite so uh, as far as military is concerned we are very very ambitious and uh, a very very fine uh, timeline has been worked out uh, we are uh, best of the best we are almost at par with what russia is doing what japan usa israel is doing in fact uh, with help with uh, with some amount of technical help from israel now we are almost capable of uh, launching our own anti satellite weapon system whether they are they'll be you know uh, conventional uh, missiles or maybe laser uh, based missile systems and and we saw no threat from russia israel japan usa pakistan does not stand technologically anywhere near china is the only competitor in this uh, field but even china is more focused towards usa you know their space uh, military uh, achievements are uh, looking towards taiwan looking towards say south korea american bases philippines there are four five american bases or maybe okinawa uh, they are not you know taiwan and uh, look uh, to at guam uh, but what happens indian air force and our defense forces are looking forward to what may happen after 10 20 30 years uh, indian air force has already proposed that indian air force will make an aerospace command so uh, things are uh, rather um, very very ambitious there is no uh, threat as such but we want to prepare ourselves what will happen uh, 20 years hence maybe 50 years hence 